Welcome, Paul, to the table reading of our new comedy, A Midsummer Night's Dream. I apologize in advance for the hectic schedule, but we premiered in three days' time to open the wedding festival of... ...of some aristocratic couple. I haven't received confirmation yet, but... Word has it that the Queen will be in attendance. It is with great honor that I welcome back our esteemed company of actors, Lord Chamberlain's men. And I am proud to say, for the very first time, we have a lady among our players. In the role of Titania, I introduce to you Miss Kate Wentworth. <laughs> Miss Kate Wentworth. And on we go with our little play. Act one, scene one, a wood near Athens. Enter Oberon, king of fairies, at one door, and Titania, queen of fairies, at another. Ill met by moonlight, proud Titania. Terry, rash, wanton. Am not I thy lord? Then I must be thy lady. Tell me how it came this night, that I sleep. <clears throat> Come, my lord, and in our flight, tell me how it came this night, that I sleeping here was found, with these mortals on the ground. Thank you, everybody. Actors, back here in one hour for rehearsal. Mr. Shakespeare, may I have a word? Oh, please, call me Bill. <laughs> Very well, Bill. Uh, I was joking. Nobody calls me Bill, ever. Okay. Well, sir, mm. I just wanted to tell you how honored I am to be playing Titania. I've seen every one of your plays, and I truly believe you are the most gifted writer of our day. That's very kind. Thank you, Kate. I can't quite put my finger on it, but something is missing. Yes, laughs. Well, the actors certainly didn't help our cause, but there's definitely some writing to be done. Did you guys see the body on that starlet? Oh, great wagon. Anyway, let's go through the play. We'll look for places to add some comedy, and if necessary, we'll re-break the story. But first things first. What shall I have the chef prepare us for lunch? You know, this may sound bizarre to you too, but despite all the, the twists and turns, somehow this story still feels linear. Yak shit. The story can't possibly be linear if there are twists and turns all over the place. I'm just saying I think we need a second act drop. I agree. But the bigger problem lies in the framework. We set up Theseus and Hippolyta's wedding in the teaser, but never pay it off. 
It's like drawing a sword and waving it around, but never dueling with it. Well, what if we did have Lysander and Demetrius get into a sword fight? One of them could get maimed or killed. Or they stab each other, and they both die. Try to keep in mind, Cyril. We're writing a comedy, not a tragedy. What? That was funny. Ding. Oh, Jesus, Mary! You nearly scared the crap out of me. Bet you'd make me clean it up again, too. <laughs> I'll be just a moment. Carry on. You know, a couple seasons ago, I uh, worked on the uh, Spanish tragedy with uh, Thomas Kidd. <laughs> The man never got up from the table. Well, <laughs> except, to, of course, to urinate. <laughs> I love the Spanish tragedy. It's a solid credit. <laughs> Kid used to run with Marlowe, right? If I'm not mistaken, the two of them were atheists. Uh, well, it's a little bit more complicated. They didn't believe there was a god. And now they're both dead. Uh, coincidence? <laughs> I think not. What is it, messenger? Afternoon, my lord. Please get up. I'm not thy lord. What news have you? Your wife is in a tizzy. Henry got kicked out of class today for cursing at his teacher. I see. All right then. Assure my wife that I will take this up with young Hamlet in the morning, and we shall resolve the matter too sweet. As you wish, my lord. Is there something else? Yes, sir. As a matter of fact, there is. You remember a while ago we talked about the possibility of perhaps maybe acting in one of your plays? All in good time, my boy. You've worked here, what, six months? Two years, sir. Really? Yeah. Wow. Has it been that long? Well, hang in there. You'll get your shot, Oscar. Os Oscar? My name's not Oscar. What? Wait, my name... That is such a clam. I'm sitting here waiting for you to pitch me an original idea. Here's one. Tickle my testes. What? <laughs> Hamnet is in a world of trouble. Again? This time for cursing in class. Anne is furious with the boy. It's almost as if you and Anne are in a battle for the soul of Hamnet. You know, you're trying to toughen him up and she's trying to make him all soft and sensitive. Well, maybe we can use that. Say Oberon and Titania are fighting for the possession of a youthful spirit. That is why Oberon plays a practical joke on Titania. Hmm. To distract her get the boy. But it backfires, which leads to the mess with the lovers in the woods. Which Oberon then has to clean up. Brilliant. Practically writes itself. Scribe, why don't you go ahead and dialogue that out? Huh? La, 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 la. How did it go? Young Hamnet nearly got himself suspended from school. Luckily, I was able to convince the teacher it would not happen again. What did Hamnet say in class to get in such big trouble? I'd rather not repeat it. Was it... fuck? Morning, Cyril. I, uh, read over the play this morning. And I thought it read rather well. Oh, it's better. I hear it till four in the morning. Morning, William. Any word from the stage? No, nothing yet. Yeah, you watch. They'll call us in at 12.30 when lunch is being served. They know what we eat. I have news from the North. I spoke with our faithful producer, and it appears we have a lit lantern for the Untitled Jew Show. Outstanding. The table read is in a week. Snaz buckets. 12.30 run through. 1230 run through. What I tell you? Sing me now a sleep. Bend to your offices and let me rest. Oh. Looks like she could use the rest. Anyone like some tea? With milk or just sugar? 
So good night unto you all. Give me your hands if we be friends, and Robin shall restore them. Great run through. We'll probably just tighten things up and tweak a few stray lines. <laughs> a few stray lines? I'm sorry, but I was led to believe that I would be playing one of the leads. Yet by my count, Oberon has twice as many lines as Titania. She's the queen of fairies, for God's sake. Where is her insightful poetic monologue shedding light on the human condition? We'll be sure to take a look at that in the rewrite, Kate. Mm. Anybody feel like mutton for lunch? La, 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 la. All right then, after lunch, let's do a punch pass on Midsummer. We'll start breaking the Untitled Jew show, and with a little luck, we'll get out of here at a decent hour. Um, what should we do about Kate? Fuck her. Let's eat. How about, love makes the world go round, huh? huh? <laughs> go back to sleep, Henry. Hey, guy, we're brainstorming here. There are no bad pitches. I yeah, know that one was pretty bad, actually. The lunatic and the lover are both made of imagination. Hmm. Not bad. But you need to apply the rule of three. The lunatic, the lover, and the poet are of imagination all compact. Write that down. Say, instead of a shopkeep, Antonio is a Great merchant prince. He uses his vast riches to acquire greater and greater wealth. But instead of luxurious greed, he's motivated by benevolence. Sharing his fortune with the downtrodden, the merchant of Venice. Merchant of Venice is certainly better than the Untitled Jew show. Although, if Antonio squares off against Shylock the Jew over money, he's going to lose. Jews. I say we call it a day. William, uh, did you know that Solerio was a Jew? Actually, I thought he was Italian. Well, that's funny, I did too, but on the scroll, Solerio says, I am a Jew, hath not a Jew eyes. How could Solerio say that if he weren't Jewish? I'm just saying. Oh, that's Shylock's line. Oh, so Solerio isn't a Jew after all. Or is he? Even still, if you prick Solerio, does he not bleed? Hmm? If you tickle Solerio, does he not laugh? <laughs> If you poison Solerio, does he not die? <laughs> uh, I feel like tea. Mary, can you prepare us some tea, please? That was fast. I could take the credit and not remind you that you asked for it 20 minutes ago, but it just wouldn't feel right. Why don't you guys take a break? I could use a fiber. 
No, if we want to finish this before showtime, we have to keep going. So those of you who feel like working, keep working, and those of you who feel like taking a break, take a break. But the tea goes with me. Your wife and the twins are on their way to the theater, sir. However, all is not well. Hamden got into a bloody brawl. Did he win? The bully called you up. <laughs> oh, oh, forgive me, sir. The bully called you a, a faggoty ass faggot. <laughs> Thank you, Ozzy. Hamnet got his ass kicked. By who? No doubt, some peasant's son who publicly called my manhood into question. The ignorance of the common man never ceases to amaze me. Imagine how good these plays could be if we didn't have to constantly pander and dumb it down for the groundlings. Least common denominator. One hour till curtain. Looks like you're fucked. I hate to do it, but we've got to split up. You chaps, stay here, keep writing Merchant. Cyril and I will go to the stage. Come down when you're finished. Cyril? La, 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 la. La, 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 la. This is a pile of dingleberries. We're sitting in here writing this play, doing all the grunt work, while Mr. William Shakespeare gets his name on it. He gets all the fame and glory. We get bubkiss. Well, first of all, John, you get paid a boatload of money to sit at this table, so quit your bitching. And second, you have neither the skill nor the experience to do what he does. And when you get your own show, everybody will be licking your balls. But for now, my friend, your only job is to come up with little nuggets of gold and tell everybody that Shakespeare wrote it. If you don't like it, fuck off. Well, that's just, just how the system works. Now you, you pay your dues, and if you're lucky, you'd, you know, maybe, maybe someday you get a chance to, to stage a, a play, play of your own. Well, I say fuck the system. No, John, you don't fuck the system. The system fucks you. I refuse to go on stage in this heinous costume and utter your ridiculous words. You, sir, are a hack. I fully expect this play to be an out-and-out -out flop and for you to end up as a mere footnote in the history of theatre. What is it now, Otto? Let me guess. You want a part in the play. Well, we're about a minute from curtain, so unless you've memorized Titania's lines and can fill out a dress, you're shit out of luck. But, sir, I... Oh, you want me to write you a part? That's brilliant. I'll tell you what. I'll drop what I'm doing, put everything else on hold, and write a play just for you, Otto. Ah! My name is Othello! And I came to tell you your family has arrived. Bishop, all walk into a pub. Barkeep looks at him and says, what is this? Some kind of joke? <laughs> all right, uh, thank you, you're very kind. Um, now, if uh, I can get you to draw your attention to the royal box, uh, where'd she go, where'd she go? Oh. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please help me in welcoming the Queen of England. <laughs> Met by moonlight, proud Titania.
Ill met by moonlight, proud Titania. <laughs> Terry, rash, wanton. <laughs> Am not I thy lord? <laughs> then I must be thy lady. <laughs> ¶¶